The South African hedge fund industry has been around for two decades now. Yet for the most part, these alternative investments were only accessible to institutional investors and high net worth individuals. Changes in regulation four years ago have made hedge funds available to the, to the general public. I'm here speaking to Elmin Wagenaar, founder and portfolio manager at Think Capital Investment Management. Elmin has over 17 years experience in the local hedge fund industry, or more specifically, fund of hedge fund management and manages a award-winning fund. So Elmin, there's no question that the new regulation has opened up a wider investor base for the local hedge fund industry, with an increasing number of hedge fund managers, including yourself, creating products to specifically meet the needs of new investors. How have you experienced the uptake of these products and the general sentiment of investors towards hedge funds? Thanks. Yes, I must say I still encounter a lot of misconceptions and fears around hedge funds. And I come across the tendency for investors to do nothing, quite often out of a fear of making the wrong decision. And that is while the data shows that the additional tools that hedge fund managers use can really offer clients exposure to sources of return that is extremely useful in current market conditions. Don't get me wrong, I do agree that avoiding rash emotional decisions is very important to ultimate investment success, but so too is considering all investment opportunities through an ever-changing investment landscape for the long-term benefit of its investors. So I see it as part of my responsibility to continue to chip away at the perceptions for the long-term success of investor portfolios. So what do you find is the most common reasons given for this reluctance to invest? Sure, I, I think the number one reason given is probably that hedge fund investments are complex. And, and how would you respond to that if that was the concern of an investor? Well, it is true that investment management in general is complex. That is why asset managers exist. The example that I typically give is to consider investments in fixed income instruments that I guess at first glance may not be believed to be complex, but as soon as a sound investment decision must be made, the complexity of these uh, instruments do shine through. Sovereign debt issuances, yield curves, duration, treasury auctions, call provisions, counterparty risk, um, all of these things must be given special consideration when investing in fixed income securities. And instead of avoiding the complexities of, of, of fixed income management, it is standard to, for clients to invest in well-regulated fixed income unit trust funds where seasoned investment professionals are appointed to employ due care and diversification in selecting an appropriate combination of fixed income instruments. So in my mind, uh, the same is true in hedge fund management. Instead of a client avoiding the benefits of hedge fund strategies altogether because it's perceived to be complex, they can invest in well-regulated hedge fund unit trusts managed by teams of seasoned investment professionals according to a set mandate for the benefit of their investors. But the, the asset class's demand for specialized specialization brings up the highly topical debate on investment fees. In a world where there is an ever-increasing focus on reducing fees, what do you say to investors that agree that it is better to leave the fund management to the professionals, but argue that hedge funds do not add more to a total portfolio than, say, less expensive traditional um, asset classes would? I guess the only valid counter-argument would be to show empirical evidence to the contrary, right? So I typically point investors to the risk and return characteristics of South African bonds and South African equities compared to an independent uh, hedge fund index that represents the returns of all hedge funds in the largest hedge fund category after all fees. And 
Since inception of this index in 2007, the, the combination of hedge funds delivered a return of half a percent per annum lower than equities, but at less than 40% of the volatility. And it also outperformed South African bonds by 1% per annum, but still at a lower volatility. So the additional source of return typically introduced by hedge funds through shorting, which is a mechanism used to benefit from the investment view that a price of a share should fall in value, it is not captured by traditional assets, and therefore the risk and return profile of hedge funds is different and complementary to that of traditional asset classes. To, um, to put this a bit more into perspective, um, in an article published by Investec in 2018 called Why Volatility Matters for Living Annuity Investors, Jaku van Tonder gives evidence that the massive value that can be added by a strategy that lowers volatility without proportionately compromising on returns. Um, in, his, in this study, Jaku says that uh, the research has shown that portfolio volatility is wrongly treated as substantially less important than investment returns, and it really matters a lot for living annuity investors. He says that investment strategies that can deliver both strong long-term real returns together with lower volatility can have a big positive impact on, on pension fund portfolios, and hedge fund returns typically characterized by lower volatility is therefore a valuable investment complement in living annuities and, and also volatility, cognizant, discretionary portfolios alike. So it seems that hedge funds can actually play a very valuable role in the portfolios of more um, risk cognizant investors. Whereas the perception almost seems to be that hedge funds are these high risk investments um, only for, for the really risk seeking investors. Yes, the, the problem is that hedge funds represent an immensely diverse group of investments, um, largely as a result of their freedom to express views through the use of short selling and controlled leverage. The result is, is really a collection of funds that show very little resemblance to one another and uh, therefore the collective invariably struggles to fit into a simply defined profile. For instance, if you would look at the risk and return attributes of all the ASISA multi-asset high equity funds or the ASISA general equity funds on a graph, the funds in each category would be tightly grouped together. Hedge funds to the contrary would be widely dispersed both across the risk and return spectrum. So one hedge fund does not represent the entire opportunity set, and but, but it does supply uh, sufficient opportunities across different hedge funds that have a lower risk. But if hedge funds are so diverse, if I were a, a risk adverse investor, how would I ensure that I'm exposed to the right hedge funds? Yes, that's, that's a good question. Um, a consequence of this diversity is that fund selection and diversification becomes a very valuable step in building a hedge fund component uh, to complement a specific investor's total portfolio. But the uncorrelated nature of hedge funds with one another, as well as with traditional asset classes, may make them very difficult to define, but it creates a, a unique opportunity to build a more robust and lower risk portfolio when combined with each other and with traditional asset classes. The, the changes in regulation also provides a well-regulated liquid environment, uh, which further reduces risk for these clients. I really believe it's, uh, it's very valuable to address some of these misconceptions. So thank you for taking the time to, to speak to us today. Um, what I am taking from, from our talk is that even though hedge funds may be complex and really diverse, these obstacles can easily be overcome by the quality of regulated products available to investors.